30 years. I've been out here for a minute! That's how long I've been playing video games, and within my time, I've pretty much played about every type of video game there has been to offer up to this point. Platformers, shooters, real-time strategies, RPGs, both Western and of the J variety, edutainment, thriller, horror, puzzle, simulation, fighters, flyers, drivers, arcade, action, adventure, sports, extreme sports, MOBAs, and whatever the french fried fuck this shit is. Well, the list is long, but distinguished. I like to think that I have a fairly high gaming literacy given the amount of time I put into this dumb but addictively satisfying hobby, which over the past 10 years has made a massive difference in the way I and many others have engaged and participated in said hobby. Learning how to play video games has become far more than just learning the button layout and how to interact with the game's basic mechanics. That isn't to say that games like this don't exist anymore, but it seems to me that the games that are dominating the gaming zeitgeist are games that require hundreds if not thousands of hours to master. Games like League of Legends, Rocket League, Valorant, Fortnite. It's no coincidence that each of these games are all live service games, but what broadens the experience even further is that they each offer a mechanical skill ceiling that's near non-existent. Of all the games that I previously mentioned, with probably the exception of Valorant, each of these games offer what I consider non-transferable skills as far as their mechanics are concerned. Because it's the game that has been dominating all of my free time and mental bandwidth, I'm going to be using Rocket League as an example. On paper, this seems like an incredibly simple game to understand. It's soccer with cars. You drive the car, hit the ball, score the goal. And because soccer or football is one of the most popular sports in the world, literally anybody can watch this and understand what's happening at a base level. Where Rocket League makes itself unique is that they use cars that can flip, fly, and drive on the walls in order to score. If you've ever played a racing game on a console, then you probably understand the basic mechanics of driving a car in a video game. Use one button for the gas, the other for the brake, and using the analog stick to steer. As far as transferable skills in Rocket League are concerned, that's pretty much where they stop. Beyond that, every other mechanic in Rocket League is entirely unique to the game itself, and it requires countless hours of mastery, or just even some resemblance of proficiency. Hence why I haven't made a video in over a year, because I'm obsessed with getting better at this stupid fucking game. Which, now that I think about it, relates perfectly to things like video game shorthand or literacy. Almost all games do this, and they borrow design elements from one another in order to create their own thing. It's no accident why things like the A button is always used to jump, or that the right trigger could be used to shoot a gun. Because if games are designed in such a way that invite the existing knowledge players have of video games, then it gives them a chance to become far more invested in it versus trying to overcome the initial hurdles of interacting with it. Yet, every once in a while, some game comes along like a foreign language or some shit, and you're up till 3 in the morning watching videos by 14-year-olds, praying to God something's gonna Rosetta Stone this shit into making sense. Instead, you end up wanting to fucking break your thumbs as you watch him strong hand grip a button combination you didn't even think was possible, let alone necessary. My personal grievances aside, games like these are fascinating to me simply from an educational standpoint. No longer are write-ups of guides and walkthroughs sufficient enough to teach someone how to play one of these games. Thus has spawned an entire economy around video tutorials. Pick any game you can think of that meets the high mechanical skill criteria and I can show you dozens of channels dedicated just to showing the nuances of those games. Hell, it's something I even did when I started this channel with PUBG. So if a game was so demanding that it required hundreds of hours to be good at it, then why would developers bother making a game like that in the first place, and hell, why would anybody bother playing it at all? I believe it's the same reason that From Software have made a name for themselves by making games that infamously kick your ass. Because getting good at something feels good. Also, tiered unlocks ranking system and in-game chat that you can use to talk shit to complete strangers. You know, everything the Lord wanted for us. <laughs> Beyond the intrinsic reward of wanting to be good at something, developers are very adept at drip-feeding us systems that satiate and infuriate those horny little pleasure centers of our brains. Winning a match and seeing that ranked up indicator flash on screen might as well be considered a Schedule 2 narcotic because that's a high you're going to be chasing until you either quit playing the game or die. Whichever one feels like the more logical outcome. And ranking systems are nothing new. Hell, the earliest form of this can be seen in arcades, where your high score would be posted alongside your initials in the machine for everyone to see. Fast forward a bit and you get the 1 to 50 leveling system from Halo, or the bronze to insert highest rank here that we see in most modern competitive games. Ranked ladders in video games are a combination as obvious as lamb and tuna fish. Lamb and tuna fish? Because lord knows if you're going to make something hard to learn, you got to give gamers a shiny little icon they can flex. What's even more interesting is not so much the rank itself, but the potential for the rank that is more motivating than anything else. It's the idea that if something is guaranteed, it's far less rewarding than if you were to earn it through trials and triumphs. Anytime I log into Rocket League, I can't be guaranteed that I'm going to reach the next rank, but that drive and hunger to do so is what keeps me coming back. A lot like gambling, really. 
You don't know when to quit, do you, Chris Wong? And much like a gambling addiction, these systems are meant to constantly keep you at your peak and you either progress or regress and holy nickel-plated shit, if I get another AFK teammate, I swear to God, I'm gonna do nothing because I can do nothing. I am powerless. I am a cuck. I am a gaming cuck. My quest to learn these games has been pretty arduous, to say the least. Mostly due to the lack of non-transferable skills like I mentioned earlier, but also because of my own personal proficiency threshold. I'm sure I'm not alone in this, but when it comes to doing something, I want to be good at it, especially video games. Unfortunately for most of us, the days of picking up a game and being decent at it in about 30 or so minutes is kinda gone. This isn't inherently a problem, but what I struggle with the most is that whenever I have free time, I don't want to just play something else, I'd rather play the game I'm already struggling to be good at. This to me is how these games begin to consume your life. Despite the fact that I was able to put in a little over 100 hours into Elden Ring when it came out earlier this year, it doesn't even come close to the near 1000 hours I've put into Rocket League since then, or before that when I exclusively played League of Legends for 10 years. It's a bummer because I used to be someone who played everything and would be excited when new games were announced and released. But with the countless numbers of botched releases and greedy in-game systems or lack of support, I just continue to go back to the same well of highs and lows that I'm used to. I want to make it absolutely clear, there's nothing wrong with only playing one game or one type of game. I mean, everybody's going to like what they like, and the beauty of video games is that there is something for everyone to find. The real issue here is balance. Making sure that all of your responsibilities are taken care of, that your bills are paid, that your house is clean, your work is done, you've spent time with your kids, you fed your kids, you know, stuff like that. Obsession and passion are really just cousins of the same idea, so if you are going to obsess over something, make sure you do it responsibly. Did I feed my kids? Fuck, where are my kids? Honey? Thank you guys for watching this video. I apologize that it has been a while. Uh, a year is a little long to go between uploads. I apologize, but I've had a lot going on over this past year. My wife and I moved into a new house, uh, getting that whole thing set up. She started a new job and really just trying to build out the space and make it what I want it to be for future videos. Now, I do have plans for future videos. Hopefully they won't take me that long to make, but it's going to be a lot of different ideas, things about video games, interesting topics that I think are fun or just stuff that I want to discuss. It's, you know, hopefully you guys enjoy it as well. I think it's going to be fun and I'm looking forward to it, but you know, feel free to call me all sorts of names in the comments. I look forward to those as well. Um, tell me what you like, don't like what you want to hear. I'm happy to, you know, try stuff out and see what sticks and what doesn't, but Occasionally, I will stream here to my YouTube channel as well. I do like playing games from time to time. And if you guys want to jump in the chat and talk some shit, bring it on. Until next time, enjoy.